All right, so we've got a beginner slash launch guide here for you today. You can think of this as like a basic game guide for those of you who need a little bit of guidance when starting Throne of Liberty. You don't want to be completely lost. Hopefully this helps. I'm going to be taking you from essentially the start of the game, the leveling process all the way through to the end game and just help you to better understand what the hell to do in Throne of Liberty. This is going to be a short, condensed version. I'm not going to go super into detail because no one wants to watch a 50 minute video and uh hopefully it helps and if it does don't forget to like and subscribe i'm getting really close to 100k subs i'd really appreciate it and of course come hang out with me on twitch i'm streaming throne liberty almost every single day to and through the launch so without further ado let's begin all right so when you start your character you're going to be level one you're going to be at castleton and you are simply going to finish your main story campaign quest line all the way to level 50 that quest line is represented by this purple icon you can also see it here on your quest tracker but also if you hit escape you hit codex you're going to see it under the adventure tab as you can see there are different chapters here and when you get to a certain point you are not going to be able to continue your main story campaign you might have to finish your last level maybe level up one or two times before you hit the level requirement to continue continue to the next chapter and when that happens option number one is you go to your exploration tab these are regional quests as you can see golden right pastures if I open my map that is located right here when you get to the point where you can no, no longer finish your main story campaign you're just going to simply go into these exploration tab and just essentially choose whichever quest you want to do I would highly recommend doing the later the latest zone that you could possibly do as you can see I haven't even done all the quests in Windhill Shores you don't need to the later zones that you go to the higher the experience that you get and the better the rewards you get the rewards will consist of crafting material experience transformation gear gear upgrade materials all that stuff so these are definitely things that you will want to do and after you hit level 50 you're probably going to want to go back and farm some of these anyways because they do give you some nice rewards especially in the early game you get to the point where you have pretty much finished almost all of the exploration quests that give you a good amount of experience to push you to the next level you have a, a a couple of additional options option number one and i'm gonna have to actually confirm this later on during our launch in the open beta because they have changed this uh, leveling experience a little bit if you go to the co-op dungeon here you're gonna have some low level dungeons that you can do pretty much the way the dungeons work in this game is you've got these dimensional contract tokens every day you get these tokens and when you go into the dungeon when you complete the dungeon and you kill the boss you're gonna see a chest at the end of that dungeon this chest consists of these rewards that you can get but in order to open that chest, you're going to have to consume these tokens. I would highly recommend not consuming these until you at least get to level 50 to spend those points on the level 50 dungeons. Instead, you can simply just farm these dungeons, kill the last boss, which will give you a lot of experience, exit out and not loot the chest. This is hands down the best way to finish off any level. I would highly recommend doing that. Also, what I noticed is Roaring Temple here, the level 30 dungeon, actually gives you more experience than the level 40 dungeon. I think the level 30 dungeon gives the most ex raw experience simply because it takes the longest. Regardless, you can do any of these dungeons and they will give you a significant amount of experience. Now, for if for whatever reason these dungeons are not unlocked, then you have another option with these contracts. If you go to any of these cities, some of those cities have contract managers that you can talk to and these managers will have quests available for you. I'm going to go to Castleton so that I can show you a lower level quest, for example. So we're at Castleton here and the Castleton contract manager is right over here. If I talk to this person, he has a list of contracts and these contracts also give me experience. However, I would recommend not burning these contracts because as you reach the higher level zones, level 50, these contracts are going to give you significantly better rewards that you're going to want to burn your contract rights on because contract rights are essentially like the dungeon tokens that I mentioned earlier. Every single day, you're going to get 10 contract rights. It's a reset thing and you can stack up to 60. The only reason why I have a lot right here is because you get additional contract rights as you complete the main story quest line. But generally speaking, you're only going to get them from reset. You get 10 per day and you can stack up to 60. So I would highly recommend just continuing to stack these up until you reach level 50, which is pretty easily done, and then burn the contract rights on the highest level contracts that you could possibly get if this is something that you don't want to burn your contracts on which by the way these contracts are pretty quick 
if you're kind of in a rush and if you're playing casually sure you could use this especially if you're capped but if you're kind of min maxing and you're progressing relatively quick especially if you're a day one guy then the last option that you have in order to level would be to burn your abyssal contract tokens these tokens are different from the dimensional contract tokens these are your open world dungeon tokens so in the beginning you will go to silas's abyss which is the first open world dungeon that you will have access to when you go here you will kill mobs with these tokens and as you kill mobs you will consume these tokens and you'll get both Solent, the currency here, as well as experience. And this process takes a little bit longer, but I would highly recommend doing this instead because you're not really losing anything. You're going to eventually have to go to Silas Abyss and grind out some Solent in the beginning anyway. Solent does become a bottleneck in the early game, so you're not really wasting time and wasting resources versus contracts and dungeons. You're kind of wasting those tokens on lower level things that you could have used to yield higher level rewards. When you finish your contracts, you are also going to farm these contract coins. You can use these contract coins at a contract coin merchant these guys could be found anywhere these guys it doesn't matter which contract coin merchant you go to i know the contracts that you actually get are different per zone but the contract coin merchants are all the same you go to this guy and you could just buy these and you definitely want to buy these daily this is more growth zones that you can get i'd be careful with buying the blessing pouch if this is available just because it's like you can get some nice purples but at the same time it costs a lot of your contract coins so just be cautious of that also you can spend more of these contract coins to get these purple recipes this could be pretty good to trade out your gear which we haven't really talked about in this video just keep in mind in the early game these growth stones are really important i would really recommend making sure you prioritize getting these growth stones and if you have leftover which you will have leftover uh, if you're not buying the blessing pouch you might be able to start purchasing these later on and hope that you get the trait that you want again we're not gonna, we're not going to talk too much about the traits in this video a couple of things that you also want to pick up on a week-to-week -week basis if you go to a sundries merchant you're going to notice that this guy has a Taydell's Tower weekly limit three that you can get. So these you definitely want to buy on a week to week basis. Again, this might not be in the game in the beginning, but when you purchase this, you're essentially going to get a scroll that will have you kill a boss in the Taydell's Tower that we talked about before, and you're just going to get some nice rewards. The other thing that you want to check out is the Guild Merchant. The guild merchant will have, you need to be in a guild to be able to do this. They will have nice potions that has a daily limit. You definitely want to be purchasing these. We're probably not going to have the rare ones in the beginning of our game. You'll probably just have the quality ones. So be sure to buy that on a daily basis. And the last thing that you're going to want to make sure you get every single week, when you talk to a Sundries merchant, you're going to see this guy offer additional weekly scrolls. These you definitely want to purchase all 12 of them every single week. These are very good rewards that you want to prioritize getting. You don't want to miss out on these. These missions will give you pouches and the pouches have nice little RNG rewards that you can get out of them. Now, these contracts are unique to region. So if you open up your map, you're going to see Stoneguard in Lazlan. So you're going to want to talk to a Sundries merchant in Stoneguard and pick this up. Then you're also going to want to do that in the Lazlan region. Uh, you can simply go to Watcher's Post. That's where I usually pick mine up because that's where I do my contracts. The Sundry merchant there will also have a Lazlan version of these two weekly quests that you will want to do. Now, the last option that you have is the Taydell's Tower. If you go to Secret Dungeons here, you're going to see Taydell's Tower. You're going to have different floors. They give you... Some some pretty juice rewards that you're going to want to do all the way down to the 20th floor, which is hiding behind my camera. You will not be able to do all 20 floors. They are level locked. So just go ahead and do them. As you can see, I cannot do the ninth floor at level 45, which is what this character is. I need to be level 47 in order to do this. So you can do this at any time. You can just literally click this, enter. You're going to teleport into the dungeon. Just do this at your own discretion because it does give you some extra soul. It does give you some upgrade mats and it does give you some extra experience as well. Also, when you're leveling, depending on how far progressed you are, you may or may not see some of these events pop up. If you open your map and you click on timetable, you're going to see these little triangle icons. You are not going to see as many as you're seeing here on the screen because these events get unlocked via milestones on the server slowly, one by one. But anytime you see one of these, and you're going to see wolf hunting contests first if you're playing at the launch of the game, always prioritize doing these events over anything. So if you're doing your main story quest line, stop what you're doing. If the event is about to start, go and do this. You're going to get some really, really nice rewards that you definitely don't want to miss out on. And you also get experience as well. So once you hit level 50, you are going to have essentially four different things that you are going to do, which we already talked about earlier. The first thing being your contracts. 
as i mentioned earlier you have contract rights these are the amount of contracts that you could do each one of these things being a contract you see a one here you can get a level two and you can get a level three in addition to the level one the level two and level three obviously yield higher rewards but you want to make sure you take the ones that you need and in the early game i would highly recommend prioritizing the weapon growth stones followed by the armor and accessory uh, growth stones depending on whatever it is that you need to upgrade you could also get like crafting mats and polished crystals you definitely need all of this but prioritize the growth stones because this is the main way you're going to get your growth stones and you're limited to how many you can get per day because you're limited to how many contracts you get per day this is the reason why i was saying try not to waste your contracts in the early game another thing that you can get from these contracts are these mastery points in throne liberty you can essentially upgrade your your weapons they require mastery and when you finish these contracts as well as pretty much dungeons and a lot of other things in the game too you get these mastery points that you could consume to increase your mastery and one of the main ways to get these mastery points is also through your contracts the last thing about contracts i want you to know i highly recommend burning your contracts here at watchers post the higher level zone you go to the better the contracts and you could either go to pure light tower or watchers post i personally like watchers post watchers post will give you contracts that you will complete either at phonos or runes of terrain these contracts in order to really min max time I would really pay attention to what you have to kill. For example, this has you kill orcs. This one has you record this. This is actually a super fast one. Some of these are really, really fast. Like they will literally take you less than a minute. Some of them are a little bit longer. You'll just have to get a feel for it, but some of them actually overlap. So this one has you kill orc brawlers, orc archers. Another one might have you kill brawlers and soldiers. And as you can see, that would overlap with this one and this one. So pay attention to the ones that you get. Pay attention to the levels and also the actual objectives. If you are trying to save time, all in all, it's really not a big deal because you can finish these relatively quickly. Now, the next thing we have are the co-op dungeons. These are arguably no it's not arguably it is hands down the most important form of progression you're going to get or farm your gear through these dungeons and you're also going to farm lucid by a way of traits which we're not going to go super in-depth into in this video but just know co-op dungeons you're going to want to be doing these and as i mentioned earlier you get these dimensional contract tokens you get 900 per day at tier two a opening a chest at the very end as i mentioned before when you've killed a boss you have a chest at the end that you can open you can consume these points to open the chest and tier two it consumes 450 dungeon points as you can see the lower level ones they consume 300 and they'll even lower level ones here the 20 30 and 40 they consume even less points so just be mindful of that i would highly recommend saving all your points for these level 50 dungeons in our version at in the early game we're probably not going to have tier two we're just gonna have tier one and these are pretty fun and challenging they will probably take you a while if you're doing it with a grip blind if you know how to do the mechanics these are all fairly easy they do have a little bit of a dps check but again we're not gonna go too much into detail be sure to check out which rewards you need for example you might need this ghost wolf alter ego you're gonna want to do death's abyss then none of these bosses are more powerful or stronger or at a higher tier than the others they're all pretty much the same they just give different pieces of gear for example this reaper chest this is best in slot chest in the early game so just pay attention to what you need also as you're doing these dungeons you're gonna have a chest here you're gonna get these dimensional crystals you can use these dimensional crystals to purchase and craft this chest you could also just get this chest by lucky rng this chest will drop your early game best in slot weapon your purple weapon that you're definitely going to want to use and try to get as soon as possible so once you hit level 50 your first priority needs to be hey we need to make sure we get these dungeons done and i'm trying to get from a vertical progression perspective you are trying to get both your purple weapons as well as whatever armor pieces you are going for the next thing that you're going to be doing at the end game once you hit level 50 is farm open world dungeons and the first open world dungeon that you're going to be farming is silas's abyss you're going to simply go there kill mobs and when you kill mobs you're going to consume these abyssal contract tokens once you run out go farm abyssal contract tokens how do you get abyssal contract tokens you'll get them by just playing the game you'll, you'll literally get them by doing contracts by doing dungeons by doing events which is the next thing on the list this is very straightforward i don't really need to explain much other than the fact that you get a lot of solent from this. it's going to be your main form of getting solent you can get some lucent and some uh, lucky drops as well specifically in silas mobs there also drop what's called called a death soul shard when you get 10 when you combine them with these other mats you will be able to craft certain blue pieces if you are going for blue gear you're going to be able to farm them by collecting these death soul shards which are found on the first floor in silas abyss the last thing you're going to want to do are these events if you open your map go to your timetable as i mentioned earlier you're going to see these little green diamonds you're not going to see as many as these and 
all of the ones in the beginning are going to be peace. Eventually, some of these will become PvP. TLDR, these give you skill books, and the PvP versions give you Marins. Well, the higher level PvP versions give you Marins. Marins are uh, mats that you use to craft skill books, but the difference between Marins and books is that marins you can sell for lucid on the auction house versus these books they're bound you just use them to upgrade your ship so definitely don't miss out on these in addition to these events you'll also see like world boss events that pop up you'll just have a lot of different events that pop up you just tldr do everything go to the world bosses do that do the peace events if that's the only thing you have just do these events all right so the last thing we're going to go over are your gear upgrades and your skill upgrades if you hit escape here you click on equipment enchanting you're going to see three tabs here we're not going to talk about trade because we're talking about 1 through 50 and just essentially what you do at the start of level 50. I'm going to probably put out a different video specifically for traits because traits can be a little bit more confusing. We're going to first just talk about the level up and the transfer. So in this game, you have different grades of gear. Gray, and then a tier above that is green. Tier above that is blue. Tier above that is purple. Tier above purple is tier 2 purple. As you can see, top left corner of that tooltip, it says epic level 2. We're not going to have tier 2 purple at the start of our game. Just so you know, that's, that's how it kind of goes up. Here's the process you're going to have gray gear first what you're going to do is you're going to consume all of your growth stones to upgrade it to max go ahead and do it then as you progress you're going to get a green piece of gear through the quest line go ahead and upgrade that to max however when you replace your previous gray piece of gear you can feed that piece of gear into your new piece of gear as long as it's one grade above and this item will then consume or take the experience from that this is the way it looks i have this tier two piece and then i have a tier one piece which is one grade below so it's be the same as like a green with a gray that's being fed into the green i click this and as you can see i can get the experience from it so you're going to start with gray level it up go to green level that up feed the gray into the green it, it doesn't in the early game it doesn't really matter what order you do it in each item you can only feed once doesn't matter whether or not that item is maxed so if i don't get this maxed out i can still feed a less than maxed out piece of gear into the new upgraded piece of gear although i would just recommend just upgrading it to max and then feeding the max level lower tier weapon into the higher tier weapon and again it doesn't matter like if you're sitting there with a green piece and you're like is it okay i feed my green growth stones in there first and then feed my my gray piece later that's totally fine in the early game the order it doesn't really matter the next thing that we have are your skills when you press k you're going to open up your skill menu and when you click on this button you're going to see in order to upgrade this skill it consumes precious training books you're going to get these books by doing events the active skills consume precious training books and the passives consume precious improvement books they're different this is pretty straightforward you just get the books you upgrade some of these abilities will be green like these first three abilities will be green you upgrade them with green books and they turn into a blue version which you get a an additional effect as you can see right here the rare which is blue you unlock the stun duration to 2.3 seconds effect and then when you upgrade it to purple you unlock that as well so take a look at the passes first and definitely prioritize the key abilities for your respective classes next we have mastery which kind of ties into the skills as well when you click on this button here you're going to see a mastery tree sorry this is pretty straightforward all you got to do is just actively use the item you will passively level up your mastery and then you will unlock these as you go the other way you farm mastery is by doing dungeons by doing contracts like i showed you earlier you will get these training do items and these training do items and when you consume them they will give you mastery i actually have some right now so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you guys that right here i've got 95.2 percent this one is at 65.9 percent I'm going to go ahead and just consume these, all of these. These are from my contracts here, and I have leveled up. My sword mastery just leveled up to 10. I'm going to unlock one of these, and then longbow is now at 72.9%. Now, these items, these training do items, they should be in the game, but they weren't originally. This was recently added, but I do believe during the NA Global launch, these will be in our version. I don't know if they're going to be in the open beta, though. Also, if you go to your menu again here and you go to secret dungeons you're going to notice a gate of infinity tab now again i don't know if this is going to be available in the open beta but it should be available during our launch this is a weekly boss that you can do and if you click on the achievement rewards as you can see when you kill these bosses you get a significant amount of rewards you get a lot of mastery points you get a lot of precious book 
books, training books, and the better you perform, if you can kill it in under one minute and 30 seconds, you get additional bonuses on top of that. So be sure to do this. It's one boss per week. Then you have to wait the following week to do the next one. And there is a little, there is a little ranking thing here. If you do care about how fast you kill it and you want to be a PVE god, if you kill it super fast, your, your name will be up on the leaderboard as well. That's pretty much it, guys. I hope that helped. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Come follow me on Twitch and I'll see you in the next video.